And we are live, everybody. Welcome to Data Art on One Park joint webinar entitled Navigating Through the Storm. Today, we're going to cover some crisis management in the current global situation and discuss some of the changes companies are being forced to adapt to, from rethinking strategy to fostering new relationships while keeping alive. Uh, what I personally like about this one is that, uh, you know, today in particular, there will be no pundits uh, talking in a you know, sharing their opinions. Instead of that, we'll have the execs sharing their experiences in first person as they walk the hard walk. Okay, so please do ask your questions as we go. We're going to try to make it as interesting as possible. Okay, grab a cup of coffee or whatever suits you. Sit back, relax, so you're in for a treat. I will quickly start uh, with the introductions. From one park, we have uh, Chief Product Officer Cyril Gerard. Hi, Cyril. How are you? Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm fine. Thank you. Awesome. Also, from one park, we have Chief uh, Executive Officer Gila Latouche. Yeah. Hello, everyone. And from Data Art, we have VP Travel and Hospitality in Europe, Max Jadanov. Hi, Max. Hi. Hi, everybody. And yours truly, my name is uh, Marcos Moro, and I'm director and president of Data Art in Argentina. So we're broadcasting from all over the place, man. I mean, from Bulgaria, Paris, uh, Buenos Aires. I mean, this is pretty, pretty big and pretty global. So uh, before we go, please remember, you can submit your questions during the session. We'll try to answer as many of them as we go or at the final stretch of the webinar. We've reserved this Q&A slot and um, please participate and stick around. We'll make it interesting together, okay? So let's get started. I will uh, throw the first one out there and uh, please, uh, guys, please do interrupt each other. Uh, let's, let's try to shake things up. And um, as uh, EU countries are either lifting or relaxing the lockdowns and bans for different activities, we see people started to move more. In Paris, for example, mobility index went from 5% at the beginning of the lockdown to uh, almost 28% last weekend. So this could be interesting. Uh, interpreted as a statistically significant uh, reactivation and that people are moving more. And at the same time, you know, some recent surveys are uh, showing that uh, only less than 20% of the population will feel comfortable using public transportation. This goes to Jill. Um, what are your thoughts about this? Do you see this as a good sign of recovery for the car parking industry? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Marcos. Um, what we're seeing there is uh, in, in, indeed, we're, we're starting to see a, a few signs of recovery uh, here out there. Uh, we've um, indeed two different trends. Uh, on the one hand, you've got the travel industry or, or still, uh, still um, let's say, mostly locked down. And uh, we are not seeing like a real true sign of uh, demand recovery in that, uh, in that part of the industry, especially for car parks. That's on the one end. But on the other end, you've got the city center parking which we are seeing like customer now shifting their needs and their expectation as you were saying that their they fear more and more to take public transportation it's not easy you have to wear masks so, like so we're seeing like the cars being back to the city center to what extent would be the key there uh, but what we're seeing good sign of recovery on the one end on the city center side travel is too early to say, but our expectation there is that we will we'll gradually recover throughout the summer as, let's say, airlines and airports return to the normal operation and probably will take time to get back to normal. And what we're hearing there is uh, 2021 would be uh, the best date, but we are hearing more and more 2022 or 20 or even beyond. So basically, two that two different dynamics going out there, but good sign that um, that demand is going to recover and that customer uh, expectation or are going to change their behavior. And that's good for the car park industry as a whole and for one park in particular. Yeah. 
Gotcha. So there's, there's, uh, of course, definitely still lockdown and travel related. Uh, but uh, at the same time, there, there is a, this slight spike in uh, domestic, you know, moving around the city and having to park your car, you know, you want to travel alone, you want to do it in your park, in, in your, in your own car and uh, with no company <laughs> if possible. So, uh, so yeah. that, that do, do I get that right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, and now that, uh, yeah, you go, you go, I'm sorry. Now that's key. Uh, that's key for one park as well, but for the overall beyond one park. Uh, I mean, it's key mobility and return to, to to normal is key to to the overall economy, the travel industry, and one park is part of that. But it's a small part of that. So we need people to to get back to to more more uh, traveling and more mobility to get back to normal. That's a, that's a key for everyone, I guess. Thank you, and and Jill, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with you uh, because you know personally to me, of course, I know your company, and uh, being a a geek, I, I consider myself to be a geek. Uh, I love technology, and uh, what I like about your company right now is not necessarily that you have you know these new opportunities that you're exploring that you're adapting to, but is the fact that you have technology at the core of what you do. So would you kindly uh, explain a little bit more to the audience, uh, what does your company do um, and, uh, and uh, a little bit more about your platform? Yeah, sure. Uh, very, very simply, uh, it all started by, by uh, uh, trying to answer a basic need, uh, which is parking. Parking, uh, uh, often here in the industry or from other people that parking is not a, let's say, sexiest industry in the world. I agree, it's probably less sexy than travel, uh, but it's a basic need, I would say. It's a basic need. As long as you got a car, you need to park. It's a constraint rather than, that's not something that you buy like, uh, like shopping or like a, 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 a flight ticket but you need it if you, uh, provided you, you, you got a car. So you, you need that parking spot. So basically the whole idea there was to address that basic needs and meet and try to match customer expectations. It all started by addressing part of the customer need, parking need, which is the booking parking need. So addressing that segment of the market, enabling people to book their parking spot online. That was the key initial consideration. And we stick to that strategy uh, for, a long t for, for, for a long time up to now. We really stay and remain focused developing that booking online platform and addressing two, two needs or two different needs uh, types of customer. On the one hand, you got travelers, people traveling for leisure or business purposes, going to airports or train stations, for instance, that's, uh, uh, let's say, probably two-thirds of our activity. And on the other side, you got drivers uh, searching for parking spots uh, within city centers. So that's the other one-third, we mean one-third. So two very different customers. Um, that, that's one. And we also, uh, the, all the idea about that was uh, that one park should address um, different types of supplies. So providing the largest car park offers to our customer to enable them to, let's say, search, book, pay, and access the car parks. Uh, so we currently have two more, than, more than 2,500 car parks across eight countries in, in Europe. Uh, we all started by France, which is our own market going south, and, uh, going south of Europe. Spain, Portugal, and Italy before opening the northern part of Europe uh, with Germany and Netherlands and also Belgium and, and Swiss market. So it enables now to search, compare, uh, and, and book the parking spot across those 2,500 car parks. Um, and, and probably one of the key also, uh, let's say, value proposition at one park is that we enable customers to choose across different types of car parks, different of car car park segment, segments. We all know the public car parks, you got like uh, probably one uh, downstairs uh, uh, close to your office building. Uh, you got, we all know those public car parks. So we are obviously addressing and distributing those public car parks, that's for sure. We also address and distribute um, airport official car parks, but Probably one of the key ideas behind one park was to bring something more to the customer. That's good to have public car parks, but also something that would be different. And 
in that sense, we have started right uh, at the beginning at one park to distribute and offer hotel parking spots, which is quite which which was quite quite new at the at the time we launched the the offer and product. So now our customer, more, more than one million customer, have access to the largest inventory in terms of number of car parks, but also in, t in terms of different segments and different supplies. So, I mean, everyone is able to find it, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's something that answers to its needs. So that's probably one of our key focus. And but what I would like to add is indeed, um, that's good to have a great inventory, the food choice, the larger source, but then if you don't have a right or a good customer experience, your inventory is probably nothing or worth less. So what we devised, and that was a key also uh, consideration and strategic decision at the beginning at Walmart, is that we should rely on technology uh, to enable our customer to, uh, let's say, book for once, um, and also have access to those car parks. So basically what we develop is a technology whereby you got the traditional, let's say, booking platform, booking engine, compare price, play with the pricing and stuff. I would say it's quite similar to what you have in, in industry. We also speak of yield management in the car park industry. We are far beyond uh, from what can be done in the airline or uh, let's say or hotel industry, but it, it starts to, to to, to come here again, uh, that's the software part. And then you got this hardware part, which we devised uh, right at the beginning, that was not done internally at the beginning, but we very soon um, decided to internalize that uh, those feature and the development of this feature. Uh, so, so that hardware technology is based on the device that you can uh, install on any car parks, I would say. And it's, uh, let's say, the core of the technology. So you, you got that device, you install that device on any car parks, and then you can plug, uh, I call it a Lego, that's probably uh, a building block, a game. So you got that device, that central device, and there you can plug anything. It can be a keypad for those who want the keypad stuff. It can be a QR code for those wanting the QR code stuff. And also you can add a license plate retention. So it's very highly modular. And probably one of the, let's say, core value at one part. So indeed, this supply and the quality of the supply, but supply is nothing without the right technology to, to get through those car parks. So that's uh, how I would define our, our platform there. Thank you, thank you for that, and uh, and yeah, I mean, technology at the core at the core of it also makes uh, your company a lot more resilient to to changes. That's for sure. Um, I, I do have a question from from the audience. Um, they say, "What does the concept of smart travel means for ground transportation, and what smart parking?" Well, smart parking is uh, well, it it, it, it can covers uh it can cover many 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 um many, many fields but smart parking would be to my decision would be let's say digital first and more and more let's say um seamless and without any customer action so if you go like beyond what we are seeing now you can go very far in that smart parking but you can imagine that in the future, indeed, the car will park by themselves and they will still, uh, I can reassure you, they will still need to park. So we will still need a parking spot uh, around. Uh, but you can imagine that those cars will park uh, autonom autonomously. So that's, uh, that's what you can think about the smart parking ecosystem. That's uh, what, we, what we're seeing gradually. So we are moving. To, to, to be more precise on the parking industry, we're moving from a traditional, let's say, very brick and mortar, brick and mortar industry. I could say also dusty industry. That's probably one of the last industry that has not been digitized uh, for, the, for, for, it's still not been digitized fully. We are far from that. So compared to the travel industry, that's where the uh, difference lies. So, a dust industry that has, again, to, let's say, 
we invent, uh, evolve to match customer ex uh, expectation. And what we're seeing with the crisis again is that probably what we're seeing and what one part is working on is that it will definitely accelerate change and this digital trend that was underlying, but probably some of the players were going very slowly in that direction. They, re they now realize that it's, it's, uh, it's a game changer for the industry if they want to be there uh, in the years to come and, and let's say prepare for the future of, car of parking. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And um, as, as, as we move, I mean, and <laughs> what, what a bliss. Usually to, uh, to park in a, in a big city is a nightmare. I don't know. I could tell you about Buenos Aires, but, <laughs> you know, yeah. other cities uh, like New York, for example, travel a lot. Well, I used to travel a lot to New York, for example, and uh, it's also a nightmare to park there, of course. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, 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 get, I, get, I get the point of the so very brick and mortar, mortar and, and so very analog experience versus, you know, something anew. There was a much needed uh, evolution in that, in that sector and, uh, and, and, you guys, and you guys work on that. So that is very, very interesting. Um, so just with, with the whole crisis uh, taking a tremendous toll on travel and hospitality, transport, mobility, all related services as, as it is around the globe. H how do you look to you guys? And um, I mean, I know this is still on the happening. It's, it's still uh, developing. But uh, what have you learned so far from this tremendous crisis? I mean, have you changed anything in terms of your strategy, uh, the way you do business, etc.? cetera? Yeah, uh, well, it's still ongoing. Huh? It's still, and, and probably the the effect would be felt far beyond uh, uh, our condition today and, and we all uh, have to be very humble uh, to that uh, and be also but we have learned a few things and we we again um, what we're seeing has never been seen before by anyone probably anyone around the, the table or anyone uh, since uh, since very a very long time so we are trying to to adapt and understand but what we're seeing there so we're seeing again uh, that the travel industry is very very impacted uh, we hope things to get back to normal but it will take time for that um, and we are seeing both customer changes again and expectation are changing uh, wanting more digital parking and, and, and things like that. So basically what we're saying uh, as a whole, as general rule, rule of the firm, we are saying that crisis is a major opportunity. When, when a crisis like that occurs, uh, I mean, uh, you, you have basically two steps. The first one is to say, oh, I, I have, well, the, the, world, the world is falling apart. I have to react very, very quickly. The storm is going to be strong. What can I do to shelter the company, shelter the people, and be sure I'm, a, I'm in, healthy, uh, in a healthy position to get out of the, uh, to weather that storm? That, that's the first step. So very quick, rapid decision uh, to be in a, a good position to shelter you um, across, uh, across the storm. And then you, you can step back and say, say all right, what, are there any business opportunities, uh, is that a catalyst for change? What was going to happen? Our customers are, are going to change their behaviors? And, and, and to be honest, we, we, we had a few things in mind already, but that crisis uh, acting like, uh, let's say, catalyst for change and a major opportunity to, 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 to change things. Um, our customer, our traditional customer at One Park, are, so since we focus on booking, they, more like the customer uh, going to the airport or train station, they plan in advance. The average length of stay or parking duration or is from, let's say, is around 10 days. And you got a lead time. It's not something that you, you do at, at the last minute globally. Uh, and in that sense, one park and that booking uh, engine is part of the, let's say, the food travel industry. You start by booking a flight ticket uh, for the, let's say, when we can uh, go back to, 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 the airline, to, to the airline, we can book flight ticket. So you, you book your flight ticket first, then you find and look for your hotel uh, in other part of the world, and that perhaps you try to find or explore your, your current options, 
And then you say, wow, how I'm going to Roissy or I'm going to Frankfurt Airport, how I'm going to do. So you start thinking of parking and you start to say, okay, I have to book my, my parking spot. So it's really part of that, let's say, planning in advance. That's for the, let's say, travel part of the market, mainly airport and train station with different booking windows and lean times on those two segments. As far but, as uh, in, that, yeah. in, that, in that sense, uh, just and 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 probably probably to pick uh, Cyril's uh, brain uh, in these two these very distinctive uh, ways of uh, actually using the, the the platform and actually uh, you know accessing the services. How do they? How do these two uh, users differ in terms of the product and and how they interact with the product? And uh, how, have you planned any um, any new features to be developed to adjust to to make this user experience of the urban, let's say, the urban user, um, uh, more pleasant or different or more direct or more adapt to what they need? Yes, in fact, the um, two things. The first thing, thanks for this question. Um, the first thing, the the customer we used to know in one back was, uh, as Gilles started to say, someone that um, knew in advance that he needed to park. So he was booking in advance uh, for a specific uh, length and for a specific parking. The new customer that we expect to see and that we start to see is the the immediate need of a, of a parking in fact and this person is um, in a city center and needs to park now which is completely different we used to uh, process the booking with pre booking and now we are moving to a, a new technology that allow us to let enter the the car um, control the the identity of the car, reading its uh, its uh, its plate, for example, and then once the the uh, the person needs to get out, we bill him based on the time he spent in the in the parking. Of course, before that, we absolutely need to know uh, what his uh, uh, registration plate is, what is his name, and what is his. Um, is um, is mean of payment, and that's Absolutely. that's the drastic it, change. It, this this is very interesting because uh, basically what what you have done is you have moved. Uh, this is very seamless. So people are usually just checking availability. And that they have, uh, you know, all their information they need to have in the product, so that they can go through uh, seamlessly into into the the parking spot. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a drastic oh, change. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolute, absolute drastic change, and I, I bet that being, uh, you know, in your shoes uh, with all these changes, and as a matter of fact, this this so core change in the behavior of the user, uh, you know, it must be fun these days, right? I mean, you changing yeah. the priorities and and doing the the whole yeah. the whole reorganization. Exactly, you get it perfectly right. In fact, in terms of prioritization, in fact, we we had a roadmap like every com like every company in the world, and then this crisis arrives. We are about uh, two hundred and five five two thousand five hundred uh, bookings a day, and then it comes to zero from one day to another. So, uh, uh, of course, it gives us a little room to. To, to think about what's what's wrong. Is it something we're doing wrong or is it only the crisis? And then we start to speak about uh, what uh, will be the customer of tomorrow and what are the changes we need to, to apply now on the on our roadmap in order to meet with this new need that we started to feel. But of course, we the, the good thing for us is that we already started to think about it and started to, 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 to build uh, part of this um, of this new technology, and then we just uh, use the, the the crisis as a catalyzer, as uh, as, as Gilles said earlier. And um, uh, in fact, it's of course the um, the roadmap is not the same at all. Um, it used to be a, 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 a let's say a, a a classic roadmap, and then we needed to to change to reallocate people, focus on um, mobile app, for example, focus on hardware focus on things that we didn't see uh, um, as uh, main areas of focus in the past. I completely, I completely get it, and I, I, I mean, it's in in one in one way, 
you know, these, uh, and, and, and probably Max, you want to wait in here, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this moment in which, you know, business goes to zero, right. And you're just going to the office and you're sitting there <laughs> and you have to figure out how, how to move on. Right. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's something very, uh, very relate, relatable to a certain extent. Uh, but also I think that that's probably, probably just the seed you need to, to, to drive in new innovation. Right. So Max, do you have any, anything you want to add to that? Absolutely. So, so I think it's, it's very interesting time. So, um, last year, actually on technology side last year, I think that, uh, roughly 60% uh, of the, uh, CIOs globally, uh, in, in some, some of the, you know, abundant polls last year, they said that, uh, they're going to increase the budgets for innovations and, and for it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, this year, I think that, uh, that actually dropped, um, at least to, like half of that or even 25% according to the last CIO report. Um, so, and then with that, I do believe that the spend will actually go down significantly, but the amount of innovations will, will be at, you know, at unprecedented um, uh, level uh, just because uh, we, you know, the, the first, I think it's one of the, uh, few cases in the history where uh, technology is not, uh, is not an, just an enabler for a lot of businesses, uh, specifically for travel and perhaps for other industries as well. But it's uh, one of the components of uh, getting uh, to a new normal and to get to adopt to a new customer or customer, uh, you know, at the other side of storm um i do believe that uh, you know we will have to adopt and then you know i, I think that uh, our colleagues from one park will, will say that how they adopted to and how they prepared uh to address uh, the change um you know and 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 uh, be revamped uh to uh you know on, on the other side of the storm but uh, what you know across the board we're seeing that um, a lots of companies they are um, they are looking to uh, to rely on technology uh, in terms of uh, safety, um, so um, uh, contactless uh, or touchless technologies. I think that uh, they will play a significant role. Um, the robotic process automation, including computer vision and artificial intelligence, will, will play the role uh, in that part. And of course, um, with Every, every, everything going online, uh, the, you know, you, you know, technology will enable, uh, a lot of people to, uh, uh, to, uh, scale up and, and perhaps even to penetrate some, some, some other regions and some other, um, geographies. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think, I do believe that technology will play here a significant role in terms of the um, additional uh, products that they will be, they, they will distribute and offer uh, digitally, like, you know, some, some revenue generating features and, and, and different stuff. But I think that it's, it's an interesting time. So while, while, again, so I will repeat myself from the beginning. So I think that the, the amount of spent will actually go down, but amount of innovation will significantly go up with with lots of technologies interesting technologies uh on the rise absolutely absolutely and uh just just one question this is out of my own curiosity and uh you know when you have to continue developing you have to continue iterating on your product it's scary i mean it's just with bookings down to zero and and you have to continue doing that uh, what do you think uh helped you guys to continue working on technology given the fact that you were at zero i mean is it that you're a young company is it i mean what do you have a startup kind of mindset uh what can, can you just give us a little bit on that yeah i think you have to to have a good faith in the future and your ability again to leverage that technology because we're convinced and in our dna we're convinced that technology can bring something more in the future. So indeed technology, you have to invest, you can also reallocate your resource and to bounce back on what Max, Max was saying, you, you can allo allocate things tactically differently. So first, 
Uh, yeah, things are going to zero, but they won't stay uh, at zero forever. Otherwise, uh, we are all, uh, all gone, I, I would say. So, so basically, you have to prepare for the future. And it's probably the good thing about the startup. So we are used to, let's say, uh, up and down. We know how to manage that. So you need flexibility, agility, as, as they say in the IT world. So you need to be very, very flexible there and also to be very, very humble. Uh, uh, probably one good thing about that, uh, you don't know. You don't know, you don't have a crystal ball, you don't know exactly what the future will look like, but you get, you can get one intuition and two conviction. And, and probably one of the strongest conditions that we have here at one point is that we can use and leverage that technology to bring a better world to our customer or at least try to match their, 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 uh, their expectation. That's, uh, so that, that's what we try to do during during the storm and, and, and now further uh, going uh, going one step further uh, to 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 well to accelerate the change that we had in mind. So what she was saying, so, so we speak in our jargon, we speak uh, of on-demand customers. So it means that both drivers go into city center, and we do we know two things about those customers. First, uh, they will need like a seamless experience, uh, contactless, uh, I would say without any action from their side and uh, without uh, any touch points. That, 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 that's one, the first thing. Um, and two, as we go uh, deeper into the city center, the, let's say, planning in advance part will be different. So you need like in continuous uh, behavior. So, you need to make driver's life easier. So you come to a car park and you don't need any bookings. That was the, the key underlying assumption. And just to give you a perhaps part, rough figures, it's a huge significant park, a part of the car park, a parking market that we are addressing there. So just it's probably something that was underlying again, and that crisis just, well, put, well, accelerate things. So that's what we're, we're doing at the moment, focusing on that on-demand uh, part of the market through the use of technology. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I do have one question from the audience here, which is, I, I think it's very interesting, specifically because it's related to what you guys do, um, and, and, and probably one of your source, one of your big sources of, uh, of demand that comes from uh, the car rental industry, and it says, one of the biggest monsters of the car rental industry, Hertz, is filing uh, bankrupts. Um, so, uh, what do you think it will? Uh, how do you think it will influence the car rental industry and the market? Um, mm. Do you have any any ideas on that? Yeah, uh, the thing is that the car rental industry is not in good sh has not been in good shape for a few years already. So it's probably well uh, for Ertz, they were they were having a very heavy debt burden. So it's probably the result of. Well, but the industry has been changing, it has been digitized, new players have emerged. So again, those brick and mortar players, the only players that can go through, let's say, through the times um, and through that crisis, will be the one uh, that have prepared, that are preparing right now the future and are, again, ready to be digitized and match customer expectation. Uh, if I come back to the rental stuff, uh, customers are increasingly asking for, uh, you, you don't want to spend like two hours at the uh, airport counter for your rental location, so, so for your rental. So it means that if you're able to address customer needs, again, uh, I think you, you're fine. So perhaps the air story is specific, but returning to the, uh, perhaps impact on the car park industry. Again, it's uh, uh, the significant part of the revenues of car park operators, uh, public operators, are linked to those rental companies. So that I would be wor worried, perhaps, um, if I were uh, car park operators. But on one park side, we we are on that front. We are we are fine. Yeah, it's like you sit on top of that, right? Because yeah. <laughs> you need the car park That's operators, a, but at the same time, you, yeah, <laughs> you're... Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so perhaps a business opportunity there. But, uh, 
We'll see. <laughs> got it. You got it. Got it. Um, and uh, just another question that came up, um, and and this is probably to Max. Um, and of course, uh, Cyril, you can totally uh, weigh in with your knowledge and product. Um, what tech features? would become a trend because of the pandemic? Contactless payments, orders, uh, customer support, automatization, et cetera. What do you think, Max? I, I can give some, some general overview of uh, what our uh, customers asking across the globe, uh, but uh, I then reserve, I think, a uh, few, uh, you know, just for, for Serial to have really, you know, few practical examples of uh, what One Park is, is doing. So um, I do believe that, you know, of course, contact, contactless pa um, uh, payments and, and uh, you know, touchless entry will, will take, uh, I, I think, uh, search during these days also what what we're seeing it's related to the uh, to the uh, travel industry overall so what we're seeing it's it's a planning uh, software for uh, uh, for uh, kind of distributing the times of attendance of different venues and events and parkings as well so like you know it's uh, it's uh, it has great applications in in fitness and in, in uh, uh, parking as well and uh, you know uh, uh, in in transportation industry, so do you like, mean you like know, do you mean like crowd distribute, management, distribute, and stuff crowd like management that? of course, yeah. crowd got management. It, got it, got it. Like you know, you, you have to uh, you know ensure that there is certain amount of people attending the same venue or whatever it might be parking. It might be you know it it might be club. It might be uh, lounge and and stuff like that. So so uh, schedule management things uh, in terms of the crowd management. Uh, it's it's on the rise right now then of course um there's going to be something that uh, that uh, is that embeds the you know the uh all the edge uh between travel and healthcare i think that you know it it has great opportunities as well but it's all across the it, it's all across the board um but you know, I, I do believe that uh, Cyril will provide more precise and practical advice from uh, uh, One Park. In fact, it's you you kind of covered it already. In fact, um, we are focusing at the moment on everything that uh, is close from touchless. We don't, we want to secure our customer without um, having to touch anything, not any device, and so on, and have a, a seamless experience from A to Z. Uh, the customer uh, that we used to have used to book in advance now he does not or he will not so uh, we want him to to process through the gates and uh, in entry and in exit uh, without touching anything and process the payments directly also uh, without touching anything that's the first point the second uh, thing that is important also is to, um, to to check all the statistics around the parkings how many cars will be uh, parking at the same time? What's the time of arrival? Uh, will there be a lot of people arriving at the same time and so on? It's also the, the kind of thing that we are um, um, working on in order to provide those statistics to, to our partners. That makes and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, hygiene and keeping distance and doing you know things and certainly uh, with a certain protocol, it has become uh, quite a quite a big a big deal. And uh, I, I I do support. I, I I do think that you know contactless, whatever contactless, specifically for payments and all, it's 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 becoming a big thing. You know, here here in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, you know, which is like fifty percent of the population doesn't have a bank account. Just for you to understand, okay. um, uh, it, it's it's now becoming a really big thing, you know, contactless payment with the phone, and it, this is something that was completely driven by the crisis. So it's uh, it, it's interesting how how uh, adoption is being driven by this situation. And, and then uh, just just one addition from my side. Sorry for for polite for kind interruption, Marcus. I do <laughs> believe that there is uh, one. You know, one trend that is uh, currently undermined by a lot of uh, companies, which is security. So with, with everything going online, the importance of the increased importance of, of the IT security and, and uh, proper fraud mitigation will, you know, right now it's not that visible because everybody is concerned with the uh, cash flows and, and keeping lights on and, and uh, investing in, in the 
you know, uh, uh, new customer behaviors. But I do believe that that's going to be a, a growing trend in, in travel industry in the next six months when everybody will be doing online. You know, for instance, like Data Art, we're, we're trying to be as, as more digital as possible with our event strategy and, you know, with, with more online, you know, in, interactions with, with our clients, keeping conversations alive uh, through different digital channels. I do believe that with uh, uh, just last year, we, we, we've heard about frauds, you know, large high profile frauds of uh, 500 million uh, records stolen from, uh, uh, from large hotel chains, then a um, few uh, 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 airlines hacked uh, over, the, like, over the past 12 months. I do believe that in increased importance of the, of the in information security, fraud management, and um, you know disciplines around that would would really be important, but that's kind of you know on top of those things that uh, uh, Gilles and, and Cyril uh, were mentioning uh, from the from from their perspective. Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we we do have some uh, some questions. I don't want to I, I don't want to leave out specifically that they're they're being submitted as now and um and i think that they are very very relevant i want to pick your your guys's brain specifically because this is uh probably not necessarily 100% related to uh car parking but it's very much related to travel and and uh, a big part of our audience is is very interesting to you know in knowing uh, what uh, what you can say about it and one of the questions and and probably i'm going to talk to um jill Dilla here. Um, do you think the airline industry and companies uh, relying on air travel are ever going to fully recover from this pandemic? <laughs> That's a good one. That one. Um, I think there's a basic need for uh, traveling uh, for leisure or business purpose. That that the, the trends was there. Uh, the key question. So our answer is yes, to will recover. But the question is uh, the time frame for recovery. First, and the extent to which it will recover. And probably no one has a crystal ball, but what we're hearing again, so like, let's say one month uh, back in time, I was hearing 2021. And now as time passes by, um, I'm hearing more 2023 or 2024 for airlines or airports to get back to, to, to normal. So it will take time, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, we, we can imagine di di different form of, uh, let's say, uh, mobility traveling. It, it would take a bit of time. Again, um, as far as we, as we are concerned, at one part of the good news is we don't need the, let's say, travel industry to recover to its full uh, before crisis level uh, because uh, we are just in part of the market and we don't need, like, the airline to be at 100% to get our business back to normal. That's as, as far as we're concerned. But yes, we tend to think it's going to take time. And probably what we will see, but I'm not an expert in that airline and travel industry, but we can share what we hear uh, in the market is that we're going to probably uh, have a, a wave of, let's say, uh, but perhaps pricing war at the first time, and there will be a airlines going bust, that's for sure. And probably the second phase and the next phase uh, will be consolidation. So again, it's a matter of, let's say the, the fitness will survive and probably the, the best also at addressing the customer needs and expectation and, and the one that can change fast or have asked themselves, even before the crisis, what can I do to get to that? that next level, that next step to match my customer expectation. So it will be a mix of uh, flexibility, agility, and... and T totally. Yeah. Ab ab absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, Cyril, just now tapping again uh, to, to your own uh, um, ideas about what's coming, and, and a little bit tied to, to this previous question, um, do you think that within the EU, uh, there's going to be some probably a little, if you will, revenge travel effect on people probably jumping on the car and and, uh, and traveling to other to other countries as uh, as you know the bans allow uh, rather than because you know there there are people that are just craving for you know to go elsewhere. 
know, to get out of the city. Exactly, yeah. And uh, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, that that could be potentially a burst in demand. Uh, it could be, it could be something that starts happening more and more. Including there, are, there are two factors. You know, you have the you have the airline for one, uh, for one. You know that they could be completely banned uh, and not flying. But then there's like people afraid to jump on a plane. So what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. In fact, you're right. Most of um, um, of the people are willing to travel. They they felt like uh, they were in a cage for a few months, which is completely new and uh, completely frightening. And now that um, the, the the borders might reopen, I'm pretty sure people will try to um, to travel as much as possible. Of course there will be a lot of fear about it so they might not consider sharing space so let's forget about trains let's forget about uh, planes at the first time and they will probably focus on their um, their own car or on camper vans that kind of thing uh, and um, i'm pretty sure uh, specifically for friends that uh, uh, people will try to stay within the borders at first and then uh, as soon as the first reports would say, uh, uh, okay, you can, you can cross the borders, um, we won't see anybody anymore in France. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it's also going to be less expensive to actually <laughs> to actually drive your car than to get to hop on a plane, right? So, uh, yeah, no, that 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 could be something that we 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 should totally totally expect. And uh, and I, I I mean, I love these questions about about the future and about trying to you know play Oracle a little bit. I think that they're very very interesting because uh, it it makes us uh, think about what could happen, right? So, uh, so another, another question that I have here, I'm going to direct it to Max, um, how the future of the personal transportation industry will change when new air taxi services will hit the ground, well, hit the ground or hit the skies, right? <laughs> <laughs> if they hit the it's, ground, it's, it's an interesting be, question to, to, to think about, you know, <laughs> just let's try to project ourselves and, and think about what will happen after. Well, definitely, definitely. So it's it's a too broad question, I think, and 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 very complex question. So I, so um, so typically, I I try I, I try to avoid uh, answering those questions in in, in a polite manner. <laughs> I just do believe that um, uh, the you know one person that I, I truly trust said that uh, right now one day is a week, one week is a month, and one month is a year, and the uh, pace of the change right now is so unprecedented that no one can even believe or think what what's going to be you know in 12 months right now so um i i you know uh, uh, over the past i think a uh, month or so we we we've uh, we've dived into the uh reports um SEC filings of uh, large uh, U.S. companies and a and, uh, few um, global companies as well. And uh, these are actually really interesting outlooks. Um, um, how do they believe uh, the, the recovery will be shaped, uh, uh, shaped in terms of the timeline? So somebody tells that that's going to be three years recovery. Um, you know, somebody says that uh, that's going to be, you know, not, not even L-shaped, it's W-shaped with, uh, you know, a few dips uh, moving forward. And then uh, what we already see that, um, you know, we, uh, we, we try to um, rely on, on, on practices that nobody has actually expected. And uh, like, you know, um, if you speak to uh, different sectors of the industry hoteliers are trying to actually emphasize their safety and and uh, cleanliness procedures something that uh, was unprecedented to them uh, some 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 other practices from from hotels hosts that uh, actually they have to the the legally have to uh vent out their rooms for 70 up to 72 hours uh between separate stays that makes uh, a lot of businesses uh really insane with you know new practices then you know i think uh uh Gilles and cyril they they also mentioned that uh, there is uh, capacity problems or capacity limitations uh for car parks and and uh you know congested areas 
uh, in terms of the you know length of uh, and, 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 and the number of the you know contact points to a you know complete minimum uh, going to complete minimum. I just do believe that there is a you know a lots of moving pieces in this puzzle, and uh, one thing that we 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 should be sure that. Um, right now, if, if the company smartly invest in changed customer behavior, and right now they smartly uh, invest in the um, uh, adopting to new normal, and uh, you know smartly understand the requirements of uh, their customers on the other side of the storm, will actually dominate in the six or 12 months from now, and then the other, they, they will just, will, will, will be not ready or not prepared or two way behind others um, uh, that somebody who did not invest right now in the, uh, to address the change. So this is, this is what, what I'm completely sure. I, I, I agree 100%. With the there, there's one thing that you've mentioned about about hotels uh, and uh, some legal limitations and stuff like that. This is this creating some inventory that probably wasn't previously available to you guys, uh, Jilla? Do you? I mean, this uh, hotels, of course, with uh, operating at loss, with uh, all rooms empty, or you know, probably mm -hmm. just hosting some people, uh, quarantining or something like that. Uh, I mean, is this creating a car park? inventory for you guys that you can tap into or the the the, uh, the good stuff the good point about hotels uh, it has always been the case uh, they have um, like under exploited car park capacity and they have that have had that uh, since we launched uh, one park so that was one of the key ideas getting that those let's say other supplies and distribute that those other supply at no, co no cost for them. So it's free money in the end for them. So, so meaning it was free money before the crisis, it would be more free money if they have more space, we, we can help, help the hotels, uh, let's say have additional, additional ABDA um, in, in the years and months to come. So, so that's what we, we, we sh we're sharing with them. And gradu gradually as they reopen, we are getting back to, to, to the capacity that we used to distribute uh, with our hotel partners. Uh, working, mm -hmm. We're working with all the major uh, hotel groups in the world. We're working with Accor, Hilton, Myerton and, and the like. And gradually they are all reopening. Accor announced that they will, they will reopen all their almost all their hotels in the world probably there are some exception uh, in some countries but they are let's say they are trying to go back to normal probably the level of activity will be not that huge but it provides again like uh, perhaps more uh, more business opportunity for car parks if car parks are empty we can help them uh, with that Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a thing that popped. And, uh, you know, as we are uh, moving to the, to the end of, of, this, um, of this webinar, I wanted you guys to take a minute and, uh, and give me some conclusions. The idea is, uh, if you can share succinctly, just a summary of what you believe should be the key takeaways from the Navigating Through the Storm webinar. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask uh, Cyril to go first. Um, just some some words for the audience to uh to to benefit from well um it's something that we 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 never knew before so um uh, we had the luck to be a, a company in good shape first uh, which helped us a lot to think about what would be the future without too much stress uh, and that's something that uh, I think was a, a key differentiator compared to other companies that uh, we have seen um, um, passing through this storm with much more harm that we did. And uh, uh, I think it's, it's something very important. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Cyril. Uh, Jilla, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. So again, uh, that's something unseen before. Um, is there a huge impact uh, on this, uh, of this crisis? That the answer is 
is yes, definitely. That's a huge impact for everyone, not one part. So for the for the world, um, is that uh, let's say impact powerful enough to drive customer change? Uh, probably yes. I would put like some a bit of caveat there. Probably uh, yes, provided that were there were an underlying trend before the crisis. So it's just like it accelerates things. Um, can technology bridge the gap? Definitely, yes. You, you, you can use and leverage your technology to bridge the gap. And, and perhaps the last thing I, I would like to share, um, we have uh, seen like a trend during the past, uh, past years uh, trying to, let's say, to ban cars from city center. I, I just, and we understand why, but probably we should rethink, let's say, the uh, role of cars as part of the full uh, mobility uh, chain. They probably, you should not say right away, cars are bad. Uh, cars are going to get cleaner, they're going to get more connected, more autonomous. They're going to park by themselves, which is good news um, for traffic jams. But we perhaps should not like oppose cars and other uh, transportation means that make things like um, more balanced in the future and, and just learn from a lesson from that crisis. And basically cars are there to stay for the next, let's say 20, 30 or 50 years. And we have to make with that a, and just adapt uh, how we, 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 we see the, the, the place of cars uh, in cities and in mobility as well. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I, I was thinking about this, uh, how adapting is just part of your, you know, it's probably the muscle you flex the most. So uh, I think that, you know, this thing about, okay, you know, cars are going to change, they're going to become cleaner, they're going to fly, whatever. I mean, whatever happens at some point, the person is going to get off, right? <laughs> they have to park. Yeah. They have, have sure. to park the off. Right? So I think it's a it's a great it's a great view. Thank you so very much for it, Gila. Uh, and Max, do you wanna do you wanna do the closing one? Yes, of course. So, so I just want to close my speech with uh, like few few numbers that I just have off top of my head. So so um, the travel was uh, one of the largest segments of the of the uh, global industry with eleven uh, percent of the GDP global GDP and um, ar around every tenth of you know, 10th job was in travel. Uh, and, and right now it's been like 5% or 10% or like, you know, 20% of what it was with over the night, right? And, but I do believe that uh, that ability to travel is actually one of the uh, most um, uh, internal and, uh, you know, most internal desires of, of humanity. And, and it's it's a... Um, I do believe that this is one of the um, aspects of, of doing business normally these days. So I do believe that it will recover. We just have to be mindful and vigilant about the changes that it will bring. And, and uh, we just have to keep the patience and, and, and the confidence in the future and uh, be prepared for, for the change. So this is, I think, that the key one, at least for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. And, and, and it's so, so, so true that uh, at the same time, technology enable us and the companies that we run to be more resilient, to, to be more adaptable, to change, to change at the pace uh, of, uh, of the external uh, changes and disruptions. So we're almost at the top of the hour. And this was amazing, at least to me. Thank you so very much. We're going to wrap it up. And um, I want to thank the audience for connecting. Thank you so much for that. Um, and for staying until the end. Uh, the, this is not the end, but the start. So I propose to keep in touch. Do visit uh, onepark.co to investigate more about One Park solution. Uh, check also, uh, also check out uh, datar.com to access a lot of interesting content on technology and uh, connect to all of the webinar participants via LinkedIn. You can look us up in the invite you've received. So please don't shy away from that. Check us out. Let's keep the conversation flowing and uh, have a rest, uh, a wonderful rest of, of your day. And um, I think that's a wrap. Thank you so very much, guys. Thank you. Thank have you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.